We hear a lot that the global temperatures are increasing and the term climate change is heard more and more. But what exactly is it? Does it exist? To know what climate change is, first you need to know what climate means. Climate, it is a typical or average weather of a certain region, and climate change is whenever this average weather shifts substantially over time. Also, is whenever the overall Earth's temperature typical precipitation pattern changes. So why does this happen? Gases in the atmosphere increase the average heat on Earth, which causes the greenhouse effect, where solar radiation is reflected and most of it is absorbed by the Earth's surface, which warms it. However, some of the radiation is absorbed in the atmosphere by the greenhouse gases and re-emitted in all directions, warming again the Earth's surface. The concentration of these gases have been rising, which leads to climate change as it is affecting the ozone layer and leaving us exposed to higher ultraviolet sun radiations. The main greenhouse gas affecting climate change are CO2 concentrated emissions. They count for more than 50% by volume of the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, and they have a long residence time in it. These carbon dioxide levels emitted today could see in the atmosphere close to 100 years. The increase in the accumulation of carbon dioxide is directly related to the increase of the global temperature. This chart depicts the carbon dioxide levels thousands of years ago, as well as the temperature at the time. Now the current CO2 is much more higher as compared to before, causing an overall increase in temperature. And it is not slowing down. There is a rising global temperature trend since the 1950s. But why is this a problem? Well, increasing temperatures can lead to changing rain and snow patterns, stronger storms, higher sea levels, warmer oceans, less snow and ice, more droughts and wildfires, and of course higher temperatures and more heat waves, which it increases the chances of more natural disasters, such as hurricanes. They have started to happen more frequently. Hurricanes are formed by the increased temperature in oceans. Hurricanes like Irma and Harvey in 2017 that impacted the United States co costed between $150 and $200 billion in damages and 215 fatalities in total. Floods like the ones that happened in Bangladesh, India and Nepal, where around 40 million people have been affected, where 1,300 people were killed and 30% of them were children. Also, it is estimated that by 2030, floods will cost South Asia governments $215 billion a year. The increase in temperature also causes droughts, like the North American drought of 2012 and 13, which occurred in the midst of a record-breaking heat wave, causing havoc on crops and water supply. The estimated cost was $56 billion and led to 17,000 fatalities. As the greenhouse gases emissions by humans increase, the temperature increases leading to a market failure. Climate change is the biggest market failure as unregulated markets have overproduced carbon dioxide as, and the social costs are not priced into transactions. Greenhouse gas emissions are a side effect on economically valuable activities. Since the impacts of these emissions do not fall on those conducting the activities, but on future generations, these greenhouse gases are external to the market. Therefore, there is only an ethical rather than an economic incentive for businesses and customers to reduce their emissions. It is hard to predict what exactly is going to be the long-term economic cost of avoiding or coping with the impacts of the climate. The cost of reducing future emissions will depend on the prices of fossil fuels and the, alter the alternative forms of energy, and which that depends on other factors such as economic growth, demographics, government incentives, diverse or depletion of energy reserves, and more. Despite these complications, economists have estimated that the best way to protect the global economy in the long term is to reduce emissions now. 
Since the costs of climate impacts are reflected in the price of goods and services that emit greenhouse gases, putting a price on those emissions gives businesses an incentive to reduce them. For example, the carbon tax. Here the government would set a price that emitters must pay for each ton of carbon emitted. Businesses will take steps to reduce their emissions to avoid paying the tax. Then, the market determines the emissions as the businesses will opt to take reduction activities that are cheaper than the tax. Cap and trade. The government sets a cap on emissions and requires emitters to hold a permit or allowances for ton of CO2 emitted. They can sell or buy permits if they need or decide to. Cleaner energy infrastructure and transportation upgrade can potentially reduce CO2 emissions. And we can also help at home. Replace incandescent light bulbs with compact fluorescent bulbs. Leave your car at home, walk or bike instead. Recycle your home's waste. Recycling cardboard, glass and metal makes a difference. And the number one thing you can do to reduce climate change is to purchase a fuel-efficient car to replace your most frequently used automobile. We are the first generation to feel the impact of climate change and the last generation that can do something about it. We have a single mission, to protect and hand on the planet to the next generation. It is up to us to act now.